Satan has authority over you because you're living in sin and you don't know God. But once God sends his Holy Spirit to dwell inside you, Satan no longer has power over you. He no longer has the authority to, to cause you to sin, to commit sin. God is not a liar. God tells the truth. Do you know who the real liar is? Is Satan. Satan, he, he speaks out of his own nature when he lies. So whenever someone is listening to Satan, he's listening to lies because Satan is the father of lies. He told the first lie. He told to Eve in the garden. He lied to her. He said, you will not surely die if you eat this tree. And, and she ate from it. And guess what? She died. And she's dead now. And because she died, you know, all of us are going to die. So Satan not only killed Eve on, when, when he deceived her, when he lied to her, he killed all of us. He killed you. You're going to die one day. The reason you're going to die and I'm going to die is our bodies are going to die is because Satan lied to Eve. He deceived her and he caused her to die. And you're going to die. So if you're mad about the fact that you're going to die one day, it's the fear of death that keeps us bound to sin. If you're mad about the fact that you're going to die one day, you should blame Satan because Satan is the one who lied to you. And he continues lying to you every single day, he continues deceiving you because he hates you and he wants you to go to hell. But I don't hate you. I want you to go to heaven. That's why I'm out here preaching the gospel of salvation to you so you could go to heaven. You know, proselytizing and, is a sin too. No, Jesus, proselytizing, my friend, is not a sin. You have to read your Bible. The Bible says, go out into all the earth and preach the gospel to every creature. So proselytizing, preaching the gospel, is what Jesus commands us to do. So if you know the Bible, if you know God, you'll know that this is the will of God, that we should preach Christ crucified to all creation. It's certainly not a sin to preach the gospel. It's, it's obedience to God. When God gives us his Holy Spirit, what happens is he sets us free from the law of sin and death. So right now, if you don't know God, the Holy Spirit has not made his abode in you. You're held captive to the law of sin and death. So the law says don't sin. That's when your conscience condemns you, tells you that don't smoke that marijuana cigarette. Don't don't drink that bottle. Don't fornicate with that woman. Don't watch that television show. That's the law of God. That's your conscience. And it condemns you. It says don't do this. But because of our sin nature, we sin. We, we disobey the law. We break the law. So without the commandment, there's no sin. But because you have a conscience that tells you not to do such, when you do it, you're a slave to sin. So you sin and then you feel bad and you're back and forth, back and forth, sinning and then feeling the shame and condemnation of Satan. But God can set you free from that cycle. It's really it's a vicious cycle. You not you sin and then you feel bad about sinning. And then to make yourself feel better, you sin some more. It's a vicious cycle. It's the law of sin and death, the Bible calls it. But. The reason that he sent Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, to deliver us, to save us, to forgive us. So he could also set us free from that law, from the law of sin and death, so that we could be slaves of righteousness instead. You're a slave to whoever you obey, whoever you serve, that's your master. So you either serve Satan by sinning, or you serve God by obedience. And, and you have to obey the commandment of God. What's the greatest commandment of God? To love him what how do you obey god you believe the gospel god commands everyone to repent which means change your mind right now your mind your mind is set on sin and god says don't set your mind on sin set your mind on christ because in jesus christ that's where the true life is you have a, you might live temporarily through sin but once you're set free from sin you become a slave to righteousness and then you live for God. So it's not a it's not a different law that's replacing the old law. It's being set free from the law of sin so that you're no longer a slave to sin. See what God does is he changes your desires. He changes the desires of your heart. So when when you're saved, you no longer desire to sin. And that's one way to know if you're saved, if you're going to heaven. You can ask yourself, do I desire to sin? Do I, do I want to continue sinning? Do I want to silence the preaching of the gospel? And if that's the desire of your heart, then God's going to judge you according to the desire of your heart. And you're all going to be condemned to hell unless your sins are forgiven. 
and all your sins can be forgiven. And all you have to do is believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and that he died for your sins. And he, you know, your sins were pinned on that cross if you believe in him. All the sins of the whole world were pinned on that cross. So everyone can go to heaven because that Jesus' death can cover a multitude of sins. It can cover any everyone's sins. Unfortunately, not everyone receives Jesus. Some people, I don't know why, they reject the, the great salvation of God and they stay bound to sin for some reason. They re it's a free gift. It's like you're on death row. It's like we all committed a crime and, and we're on death row and, and, and someone comes and pardons us all and he says, you're all guilty, you all committed the same crime, but I'm gonna give you a free pardon so you don't have to die. That's kind of like what Jesus did on the cross for us and everyone can receive that free pardon, but some people, they're so evil that they say, no, I'm gonna justify myself by my own righteousness or they refuse to acknowledge their iniquity and they say, no, I, I, I'm good enough to get to heaven by my own works. Well. No, that's not the Bible says that that the law has bound that that sin keeps you bound and and you're all we're not going to make it into heaven by our own works. There's no way that you can work your way to heaven if you're judged by your works. The Bible says if you if you sin against one commandment, you're guilty of breaking all the commandments. So even one sin, Jesus says, is enough to condemn you to hell. Because the standard of God is so high that no one can meet it by trying. You can't, tr no matter how hard you try, you're never going to be good enough for God. It, you're never going to be righteous enough. You're never going to be holy enough. You can, tr no matter how hard you try, you're always going to fall short of the grace of God. And you know this because God gave you your conscience and you're always feeling shame and condemnation because you know that no matter what you do, it's never good enough. to the righteousness of God and by your own works, by the works of the flesh, no one will be justified before God. The only way to be forgiven is if someone pays your fines for you, someone pays off your debts. And someone did pay off your debt. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the Almighty, the beginning and the end. He created you. He was the pre-existing God. Before time began, He has always existed. Before Abraham was, Jesus says, I am.